This is Alex Holcomb with Applied Information Sciences, and this is the second of two parts in which we're implementing a custom exploration formula that will use metadata, and this is inside Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007. So in the previous example, we put all the pieces in place for our custom exploration formula. In this example, we're going to extend the logic in that formula so that it calculates the expiration date based on a date field contained in a secondary list. So what I've got set up is this project records library, and I've added a field called project. Now this is a lookup field that's pointing to a list called project info. Now this is a list that I created, and I added a date field called completion date. So the way I want my expiration policy to work is when it evaluates the record, it checks to see what project this record is associated with, does a lookup on that project, and gets the associated completion date. It then adds two years to that completion date and sets that as the expiration date. So the way we're going to implement this is through our compute expire date method, which we created in the previous example. Now, previously, we were just returning the system date time dot now. Uh, in this example, we're going to add our own custom logic. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we have a value for our project, right? And we're evaluating the record list item. If we don't have a value, then we don't have an associated project. So we make sure that we have a project, and the next thing we want to do is get the lookup list and get the corresponding value in that lookup list. Now the way we get the lookup list is by taking the project field and casting that into an SP field lookup object. We can then do a dot lookup list on it, and that will return a string representation of the GUID for the ID of that corresponding list. Once we get that lookup list, we then want to get the corresponding item for our project. So the way we do that is we get the value for our project field, and we create a new SP field lookup value based on that. Uh, that will allow us to pull up the ID for the corresponding item by doing a dot lookup ID. We pass that ID into our lookup list dot get item by ID method, and that will return an SP list item for that corresponding item. So now we've got the project item from our project info list. Now the next step is to get the completion date from that list item. And finally, we want to take that completion date and add two years to it. This will give us our expiration date. And that's what we pass back from our method. So let's go ahead and compile this and implement it. Now, I've changed logic here. I've compiled it. What I need to do is redeploy it into the global assembly cache. So I've got a script to redeploy this to the global assembly cache. And what it does is it unregisters the existing assembly, uh, installs the new assembly, and then does an IIS reset. So let's go ahead and kick this off. And once this is done, we'll go back and we'll try to initiate it. Now the way we get the expiration formula to execute is by doing a change to the metadata. So we can edit this for project A, and then we go ahead and click OK. And this should execute our functionality to recalculate the expiration date. So you can see here it's 12-31-2009. So what it did is it took project A, did a lookup into the project info list, got the completion date for project A, which is 12-31-2007, added two years to that and set that as the expiration date. So this is an example for implementing a custom expiration formula. And in particular, when one of the values you want to use inside of your formula lives inside of another location, like a secondary list. Now, there's a specific problem with my scenario, and that is if the project completion date is modified, the affected records will not have their expiration date recalculated. Now, I purposely don't address that here because how you implement that really depends upon your situation and your scenario. There's a lot of factors that play into that, right? Like the volume of records that need to be processed, what time they should be processed, how soon they, they should be processed, etc. Uh, you could look at things like event handlers or timer jobs, but the implementation really depends upon your situation and scenario. Uh, there are a couple things to be aware of, though. Now, I've created this helper class called Policy Helper. It's just a command line utility. There's a couple things I want to illustrate with it. Uh, the first is that there's this expiration task class. Now it has a run method 
and you can pass in a site. Uh, and what it does is it goes in, it processes all the items it can for expiration. What that means is if an item does not yet have an expiration date set, it will calculate the expiration date and set it. And then for all the other items, it goes through and it will process those items and perform whatever expiration action should be performed on them. Now, it will go and it will calculate the expiration date, but only for items that do not have the expiration date. Right? So if it's already been set, it will not go recalculate it. So in order to, re to have it recalculate the expiration date, uh, one thing that we can do, and I'm doing it here, is find the items that are affected, go through, you can call this expiration dot set expiration date for item method, uh, pass in the list item, uh, pass in the expiration date, and you pass in a value for whether or not it writes out to the log uh, if there's a failure. Uh, but basically what this will do is it'll go set the expiration date on the item. Now here's the trick. If you go and you set the expiration date on the item to null, and then go and call the expiration task dot run, it'll go through and it'll see that that expiration date is set to null, uh, to calculate that expiration date for you, uh, and then process the action. So that's one way to handle that situation, that scenario. But as I said, it really is dependent upon uh, your circumstances for how you implement it. But regardless, I hope I've given you some ideas on how you can implement your own custom expiration formula and some of the uh, hurdles that you run into doing so.